crude oil is entering its weaker four month period out of the year. We can see that with our seasonal analysis indicator labels up here, where August through November are the weaker four months inside of crude oil. We broke this seasonal analysis pattern down in more detail in a recent video, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. It'll give you context on the ideas we'll talk about in today's video, which is an update on both the day trading and the swing trading setups that we discussed in this video. Now, if we do a recap first of that seasonal analysis, we can see over the past five years, November out of this four month period has been the weakest month and August has been the second weakest month. October has been in third place and then finally we see September. Now, as of right now, we have yet to really see that weakness kick in. In fact, if I show you a chart of USO, when we first started talking about this setup, we had these Keltner channel wedges plotting with a high that we had formed as of that point. Since that video, we've even broken above that high, so we don't see any signs yet of any kind of exhaustion. All we know is we're expecting weakness to kick in, but we have yet to see that trigger which tells us that, hey, now we're seeing sellers come in and we can look at the idea of a potential reversal. One more time, those signs can be something as simple as our edge signal confirmation, or even something like the momentum cross where you see that, hey, now the shorter term EMAs have crossed. Neither of those has yet shown itself on a chart of USO on the daily time frame. However, we have seen some day trading triggers using the bearish bias that we've discussed. In fact, if we take a look at today's price action here on a one minute time frame chart in crude oil, we can see that price initially in the morning starts off chopping well inside of our volatility box levels. In fact, I have to shrink the Y axis for us to see both sides of the clouds and we can see price is just chopping in between. Now, as of the 7 a.m. Pacific mark, we can see that price breaks above that opening range and we start to get the bullish trend in crude. Now this trend, while we did have this uptrend in place for the better part of two hours, was not really all that volatile. In fact, it was a fairly small trend in which we made these gradual increases. The final place where we had an edge came in that 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour, where if I zoom in, we have price action rally all the way into our sign entry lines. This is where we have a volatility edge, something we can take advantage of. Now, in terms of our fade setup, we have price action breach our sign entry line with this green candle. So that's step one. And step two, we had our overbought confirmation with this red edge signal arrow. And that gave us a sign that, hey, we're now expecting price to reverse here. We had opportunities to enter at the sign entry line. And you can even see how the momentum crosses here gradually. And this is plotting where the EMAs would plot. So you can see that angle starts to become a downward sloping angle. Now inside of crude, the risk that we had on this particular trade was 18 cents. And that's from the cyan line to the outer edge of our volatility box clouds. And we were looking for that same 18 cents in the opposite direction. We exceeded that hitting 24 cents, but we still fell short of our second target where we were looking for closer to 64 cents. And this was that home run sort of trade idea. So only T1 inside of crude, that too in the middle of the lunchtime hour where this bullish trend finally shows some signs of exhaustion, but that's really only temporary. As soon as the lunchtime hour ends, we can see the bulls re-enter. We breach the upper edge of our volatility box sign entry lines towards the end of this hour. And now this is the edge of the hour. We have no capital at risk. And we're taking a look to see what happens here. Do we see the buyers bring price action up higher, which gives us free information that, hey, the aggressive models are no longer being respected? Or do we see sellers kick into full gear here? And do we see them defend this level, showing us that, hey, the sellers do have some legs underneath them? Here, very clearly, we can see that the buyers are the ones winning this battle. And that took us from the aggressive volatility box down to adapt to this new volatility and that took us to the conservative volatility box, which is the model which remained for the rest of the day. So inside of crude, this little blip right here is where we were able to take advantage of that day trading bias, which all stemmed from our longer term daily uh, time frame chart and the seasonal analysis that we used uh, to understand this four month week period. One more time, I'll leave a link to the video which breaks down the seasonal patterns in both crude oil which is this four month period along with USO and the day and swing trading triggers that we're waiting for. 
As of right now, the swing trading has yet to give us the signs of a reversal, but we have seen a few intraday opportunities which have been good for exactly the moves we talked about today. All right, hope this video was helpful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.